Eh. All right. So yesterday, in theory, and hopefully in practice, you answered some questions about ceremony, where you looked at some of the important issues that Taya was facing. The beginning of the book's confusing, right? And it jumps around in time and jumps around in his thoughts. And any time there's kind of a new paragraph, basically we're moving into a new thought that he's having, right? So my example that I gave online was, you know, if, say that you, not to bring up anything personal, but say you broke up with somebody, right? Or they broke up with you and you don't want to think about them anymore. It makes you feel sad. But it seems like everywhere you go, everything you look at, whether it's the songs on the radio or a TV show, it reminds you of stuff you used to do together, right? Which brings you back to the things you don't want to think about. Tayo, when he came back from war, had a whole bunch of things happen, right? So uh, his cousin Rocky was killed in the war, and he had to deal with that, and he had to deal with the fact that he promised his uncle that he would uh, stay and help him with the new type breed of cattle, uh, and then when he went off to war, then he, his, his uncle ended up dying, so he has to deal with all of these things, right? Now, I'm going to talk through the various issues that he has, but then I'm going to just do a little visual representation, and I have this document on Schoology for you. These are kind of the main issues that Tyre was dealing with at this point, and these are kind of the main thoughts that he has, right? So we have the loss of the land, Rocky's death, the drought, connection to the earth, Tyo's background, his childhood, his mother's death, Tyo's childhood, the lie, uh, Rocky wanting to be white, promise to Josiah, Rocky's connection to white people, damning the rain, and Josiah's death. Right, so I'm going to talk through those issues, and if I were you, uh, and you like getting good scores on your papers, and you also want to good, practice good skills for college, I would take notes as you do that, as I do that. So if you could open up your books, I would also open up your packet, and take a look first at, uh, we have two, pa two uh, quick things on page 6 and page 97. Uh, on page 97 is where the first reference on page 6 comes from. And on page 97 is when he goes to visit uh, the woman named Night Swan, right? So Night Swan had an affair with Josiah. Um, Night Swan is one of several characters in the book who seems to be either mythical or of the past, right? There's some descriptions in here that she is kind of even more than a human, if that makes sense. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the book, but there's a couple descriptions that say things like uh, she remembers every time she's danced, right? And, and the years and time had no meaning for her, uh, and she wore her hair as from another era, right? So these are kind of uh, um, uh, evidence of, of um, traditional beliefs and traditional stories kind of playing themselves out in reality. Tayo, in the beginning, has forgotten a lot of these stories, and as we move forward, he's going to start to see evidence of these stories, in reality, and that's what allows him to move forward. So the first reference on page 97 and page 6, and you can just jot this down, uh, is a scratchy Victrola was playing guitars and trumpets, a man sang sad Spanish words, evil there, and if uh, any Spanish speakers are better than that at me, which is probably anyone who speaks Spanish, you feel free to correct my pronunciation on that, were the only words Tyro could understand. Now, when he goes here, uh, it's a weird scene, right? His uncle sent him to deliver a message to the older woman he's having an affair with, and then Tayo himself ends up having an affair with Night Swan. But that becomes a very important thing, right? And on page 100, we'll look at this a little bit later too, but she says, uh, you don't have to understand what's happening, but remember this day, you'll recognize it later, you're part of it now, right? Now, this becomes important later, but in the beginning on page 6, Tayo was waking up. Right, and he's in the middle of kind of PTSD and flashbacks from the traumatic experiences he experienced in the war. And on page six, one of the first things that he dreams about and thinks about as he's waking up from this dream, it said, uh, tonight the singing come first, squeaking out of the iron bed, a man singing in Spanish, the melody of a familiar love song, two words again and again, evil there, right? Now, all these thoughts are kind of running together. If you think about uh, the little voice that's going through your head, right, and it's telling you to either pay attention to me or not, or talking to you about other things, um, your consciousness, right? And it kind of goes from thought to thought to thought to thought. And what's happening here is he's going to be moving through all these different thoughts as they are all just connected to each other, right? So he thinks about uh, uh, Night Swan, right, which makes him think about the cattle and makes him think about Josiah and makes him think about his brother and makes him think about the war. All these different things go together. Um, there's a really good quote on the middle of page 6 and page 7 that kind of relates to all of this. It said, he'd not been able to sleep for a long time for as long as all things had become tied together like colts in single file when he and Josiah had taken him down the mountain. Right, so you have one horse in the front and horse behind it's tied to it, horse behind that is tied to it, horse behind that is tied to it, right? So where one horse goes, all the horses go. 
Now this is kind of how his thoughts go. As much as he tries to control what his mind is doing and the things that he's thinking about, it seems like everything he thinks about takes him back to these issues he's having. Um, now, if you were writing about dreams, right, because dreams are related to his mental state, you're looking for some evidence in the beginning about what his mental state is like. That quote about the Colts in a single file line is a good one. Also on the top of page seven, we have another good quote. So six and seven would be some good evidence as to his mental state in the beginning. It said he could feel it inside his skull, the tension of little things being pulled and how hard it was with tangled things, things tied together. And as he tried to pull them apart and rewind them into their places, they snagged and tangled more tightly. So the other description of his mind is like a blanket, right? And it's got all these, uh, these knots and tangles in it and the more you try to pull on the knot to loosen to to free them other knots get pulled right and so as he tries to kind of hang on to these thoughts and control his mind it seems like things are getting more tangled and more twisted up in there page seven uh we have another thing that he thinks about the deer right now it said uh one trick he tries to do is to focus on other things right so he can if he can think about a deer not the deer, but a deer that he is not affiliated with, then his mind's okay because he's giving it something to do. But generally what happens is that deer he thinks about to avoid thinking about his problems becomes the deer he hunted with Rocky, right? Uh, <clears throat> and he and Rocky hunted that deer, and then from that we see the scene where Rocky is dismissive of uh, the traditional way of preparing the deer, right, uh, and, and being respectful to it, and he thinks the deer should be hung up in a cold place so that the, the meat doesn't spoil and all these things. But he thinks about this deer, and then thinking about the deer makes him think about hunting the deer, which makes him think about Rocky, which makes him think about the war, which makes him think about Josiah, and he's back to this all over again, right? Does that make sense? Okay, going on. Uh, on page 14, another thing he thinks about is the drought, right? Uh, we have a quick quote on drought on page 10, and it said, the drought years had returned again as they had after the First World War and in the 20s when he was a child and they had to haul water to the sheep in the big wooden barrels in the, uh, the barrel, uh, to the old, in the old wagon, right? Now, on page 14 with this drought, the reason this drought comes is because he blames himself for it, right? So he's in the jungle, and he has been taught that nothing is all good and nothing is all bad and you need to accept the weather and be part of it. But instead, it said... Um, so he had prayed the rain away. In the jungle where he was, it was raining really hard and it kept raining. And if you're in a place where it rains all the time, A, all your clothing gets wet. If you have any wounds, they don't really heal. And so he, he dammed the rain, right? And he wished for the driest weather so that it could dry out his wounds and dry out everything. But then when he comes back, he sees the drought, right? And so he asked for it. He prayed for it. And he dammed the thing that they need right now. Uh, Tayo looked at the long white hairs uh, to, 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 to growing out of its lips. This is the goat. Uh, and uh, long white hairs growing out of its lips like antennas, and he got a choking in his throat again, and he cried for all of them for what he had done, right? So he blames himself not only for the death of Rocky and the death of Josiah, but the drought. All of this things kind of come together for him. Okay, now, page 20, 21, alcohol is another big issue, right? Now, in this book... Tayo's an alcoholic, as I think most of his friends are. Uh, and so we see the, the negative effect that alcohol has on their lives as they attempt to deal with the PTSD and the disrespect they receive once they come back from the war. But we see in the beginning, before the war, it didn't used to be like that. Uh, page 2021, 20, they say coffee's bad for you, he laughed. And Tayo smiled because Harley didn't used to like beer at all. And maybe this was something that was different about him after the war. He drank a lot of beer now. Right? The first time they tried it, they thought it tasted disgusting. Right? And now Harley, even though his family is so worried about his alcoholism that they got rid of his car, he was willing to ride a donkey all the way as far as he could, miles and miles, to get to the bar to drink. Right? Okay, going on. Now, a couple other things. Um, on page 44, we have the stories, story of Rocky's death. Now, the story of Rocky's death is a big one because this is something that Tyro keeps thinking about over and over and over. Now, Tayo uh, had been with Rocky, and they were on uh, the, the Bataan Death March, right? And it was pouring rain, and Rocky was being carried in a blanket, and he, they slipped the blanket, the, the blanket slipped out of their hands, and then Rocky was screaming, and Tayo was screaming, and then a Japanese soldier hit Rocky in the face with the rifle butt in the head and killed him, right? Now, the soldiers around him said Rocky was already dead, but Tayo doesn't believe that. Now, the problem here was, there were many problems. One, his, his, you know, his adopted brother uh, uh, was killed, which is traumatic for him. But also, he was screaming as it was happening, right? Now, this is kind of morbid, and this idea is going to come up a lot in the things they carry, which we'll be reading later in the term. 
because he was screaming, he didn't know what the sound was like when Rocky was killed by the rifle butt. That sounds morbid and disturbing, but it's a mystery. And so what happens is his mind kind of plays out all these different scenarios of what that sound could sound like. And in the beginning of the book, there's a number of different times where he hears crunching things, like once he'd love to feel these seeds, uh, to feel them break between his teeth, but not anymore. The sound of crunching made him sick. Uh, he didn't want to hear this Harley crunch the seeds. As we move forward, another example that he is healing is he is able to tolerate and even start eating things like this that have the crunch and not really worry about it anymore. Okay, going on, a couple things, uh, a couple more things. Um, on page 45, I would jot this down. One of the other essay topics you can write about is the importance of stories in the book, right? In the beginning, Tyro does not remember the stories, and as he moves forward, especially as he meets Batoni, uh, he learns the importance of remembering the stories, and he starts to see evidence of the stories in nature, right? So if you wanted to write the story essay, this would be some good, useful stuff in the beginning, because he was taught these things by Josiah. It said, uh, so this canyon Josiah was talking about, said the people said that even in the driest years, nobody could remember a time when the spring had dried up. Uh, you see, Josiah said, with the sound of the water trickling out of the hose into the empty wooden barrel, there are some things worth more than money. He pointed his chin at the springs and around at the narrow canyon. This is where we come from, see? This sand, this stone, these trees, these vines, these wildflowers, the earth keeps us going. He took off his hat. Now, here's the big, big key quote. Right, And I would bring this in. There's a couple different essays that this quote works for. On page 46, it said, um, These dry years you hear about, some people complaining about, you know, the dust and the wind and how dry it is. But the wind and the dust, they're part of life too, like the sun and the sky. You don't swear at them. It's the people, you see. They're the ones. Here's the quote. The old people used to say that droughts happen when people forget and when people misbehave. Right? Now, Tayo forgot, and he misbehaved when he was in the war. And a lot of other people in the book do too, right? The result of that is he has to, he's punished, and the punishment is the drought, right? Now, we also see another story in the traditional story that goes in the poem, which kind of accompanies this, the story of the fly and the hummingbird. Uh, we see a similar thing, right? Humans misbehave, and they forget, right? And then they're punished, and then they need to go about the ceremonial process of putting things right, which is what the hummingbird does, and also what Tayo does in different ways. This is another good paper topic you can write. Okay, moving on, 51, uh, so we come back to the deer issue and more with Rocky, right? Now, if you're taking notes on this, you could label all the Rocky stuff with a very clever uh, uh, special code of the letter R, so that you know any quote labeled with R is about Rocky, which could save you time as you move on. Moving on, uh, so we see the story of the deer, right, and how they killed the deer, this is the deer he didn't want to think about. And part of the reason uh, the deer was an issue is because the deer also related to another issue, which was that uh, Rocky wanted to leave the reservation and leave his family, right? And he's taught by his teachers. It said, the people said that you should do that before you gutted the deer, be respectful to it. But Rocky was funny about things like that. He was an A student in all state and football and track. The teachers told him and coaches told him, nothing can stop you now except one thing. Don't let the people at home hold you back. Rocky understood what he had to do to win in the outside white world. When Rocky was a success, no one would dare say anything against any of them. Rocky wanted to be emulate the life he saw from white people, right? Which involves leaving his family behind, leaving his culture behind, leaving his language behind, right? As he saw it. And I think uh, uh, Auntie does on some level too. Grandmother does not, right? Now, <clears throat> part of this, this desire is explains why he decides to enlist, which brings he and Rocky to the jungle in the first place, which leads to him getting killed and Josiah and all these things. Again, all this stuff is tied together. Okay, going on, a couple more things. The enlistment scene on 64, we will look at that in a little bit more detail coming in the, up in the next couple days. Um, but the enlistment scene is important because for the first time, a couple things here. So on 64, first, the army recruiter is ready to go, right? He keeps looking at his watch. He's not overly serious about what he's doing. And he says things like, uh, anyone can fight for America, even you boys. In this time of need, anyone can fight for her. Now, the implication, what is being implied there, is even a person who is a Native American could fight for America, right? Then he goes on, now I know you boys love America as much as we do. There's a differentiation there. You are saying you are different than us. But this is your big chance to show it. Now, <clears throat> um, he then ends his little sales pitch on 65. Rocky said, I want to be a pilot. You can fly all over the world that way, can't you? The recruiter was packing the leaflets into the cardboard box. He didn't look up. Sure, sure, you enlist now. You'll be eligible for everything. Pilot training, everything. You men want to sign up? Notice the pronoun shift there from calling them boys to calling them men. Now, this is the key. Then I think the thing that explains why Tyo went. And my brother, Rocky nodded, nodding at Tyo. If we both sign up, can we stay together? 
It was the first time in all his years that Tayo had lived with him that Rocky had ever called him brother. Auntie had always been careful that Rocky didn't call Tayo brother, and when other people mistakenly called them brother, she was quick to correct the error. We get some information on what Tayo's life used to be like, right? And he has never really had a family. His mother was an alcoholic and didn't, wasn't really there for him, and he spent a lot of time as a very young child and as a baby alone, right? He was taken away by social services, and he spent time in the, the floor of bars. Uh, and so when he is left by his mom to live with Auntie and, jo and Robert and Josiah, the only one who's nice to him is Josiah, right? Rocky doesn't want him around at all, and so this is the first time he's ever called him brother and shown some type of affection for him. Now, that's powerful if you've never had anyone in your life to do that, right? Um, now, on page uh, 172, we have an important promise, and this is the big promise that he makes to him that he forgets. Now, right as they um, enlist, Rocky, Rocky and Tayo, then Tayo all of a sudden remembers the promise that he made to Josiah that Josiah, he would stay back and help Josiah with the cattle, right? So as Josiah had his affair with Night Swan, Night Swan told him about this guy who was selling his cattle because of the drought. Because of the drought, it allowed Josiah to buy the cattle in a way he would not have been able to without the drought. He sees them and they're very skinny, right? So what his plan is, is to take one strong Hereford cow, which, or a bull, right, which is used for meat, right, they're bigger, and a Mexican cattle, which is used in the book primarily at rodeos to, 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 as for saddle bronc riding and for uh, uh, calf roping, um, and breed them, right? So hopefully you would get the meat, uh, some of the qualities of meat cattle, and also the survival abilities of the, na of the uh, uh, Mexican cattle. So he promised Josiah that he was going to stay behind and help him with that. Okay, almost done. Two more things. On 124, <coughs> this is where Tyro blames himself for Rocky's death because he was not there. It said, he loved me, he loved me, and I didn't do anything to save him. Right, and this is in the conversation with Batoni, and we'll come back to that, right? The two last things that we're going to touch on more in further uh, uh, videos coming up here are the loss of land and what it means to Tayo and the lie, right? Now, the lie shows up in a couple different places, and we'll talk about that. But very quickly, I want to show you... Uh, hang on. Very quickly, I want to show you this, right? Now, if we were to take this circle and start to draw some connections between things, right? We could see Rocky's death is connected to Josiah's death. Damning the rain is connected to Josiah's death and connected to Rocky's death, right? Rocky's connection to white people is connected to Rocky's death. Connection to earth is connected to Josiah, connected to damning the rain, right? Promise to Josiah is connected to the drought. It's connected to Rocky's death. Uh, Tayo's background is connected to Rocky's death. Um, and mother's death is connected to promise to Josiah. It's connected to Tayo's background of childhood. It's connected to Rocky's death. Rocky wanting to be right is connected to his death. Um, and Tyle's childhood is connected to promise to Josiah. It's connected to mother's death. It's connected to his background. It's connected to... Uh, you can see what I'm doing here, right? And you can see this is why, and I think if we were to keep going here and spend a little bit more time on this, my video is going to run out. You can see how interwoven all these different issues are, right? And so in the beginning of the book, this is why Tyle's mindset and this is why the narration is so confused and disjointed is because this is the way his mind is. And I think if we were to spend a couple more minutes on this, we could connect a whole bunch more things here. And really what you see is this is just a web of thoughts, right? So we had the description of his mind being like the horses tied together and also like the tangled blankets. So that is where we're at. Thank you. Keep reading Heart of Darkness at home. I'll have something for you tomorrow. Thank you.